In this video, we're going to look at how to choose the right pricing plan for your bubble application. There are actually several different components that you can put together in a custom package for your app. So you want to make sure that you choose the right one to support your app's needs and your budget. In order to choose the right pricing option for your bubble application, we need to understand what can actually go into a subscription package. And keep in mind, you're making this decision per application. You know, every app is different. Some may need to be on higher plans. Some apps can stay on lower plans. It's just going to depend. All right. So the first component is the app plan. This is the only required part, and it may be the only thing that you need uh, for your application to cover everything. The app plan is what actually gets you access to the editor, and Bubble has several levels of app plans, starting from a free plan to few different levels of paid options. The higher you are, the more access you have to different capabilities, limits are lifted, things like that. Every app plan also comes with a certain amount of workload units that you can use throughout the month. This is how Bubble tracks your app's activity. And the higher you are in those plans, the more units you get. All right, so the second component is the workload tier. Now this is optional, you may not need this, but a workload tier will give you additional workload units that you can use on a monthly basis. So if your app plan doesn't quite cover what you need in terms of workload and you're not really ready to jump up to the next app plan, this is a great uh, in-between option that's going to keep things more affordable. And Bubble actually offers several levels of workload tiers so you can really fine tune exactly what you need to cover your workload needs. So the third uh, component here is overages. So if you've exceeded your allowed workload units, whether it's from the app plan or an app plan and a workload tier combined, you're going to go into overages. And overages are more like a pay as you go model. So for every extra thousand workload units you use within the month beyond your allowed units, Bubble's going to charge you a certain rate for those. Now, you can also choose to disable overages. You don't have to have those on, especially if you want to control your monthly invoice a little bit. Um, but just keep in mind, if you do exceed your allowed units, and you have your overages disabled, your app is going to be taken offline. So you want to be very careful with this. You can always bring it back online by enabling overages or purchasing a workload tier so that you can get the coverage that you need. Now, this entire subscription package, whatever you choose to put together here, can be paid on a monthly or annual basis. By the way, if any of this has been helpful so far, our fast track course teaches how to leverage Bubble vastly more in depth. Folks who are wanting to learn how to build their app properly by following a fully self-led structured video course have found it helpful. And if you think that this would be useful for you too, you can go check it out at coachingnocodeapps.com slash fast hyphen track. Now let's focus a little bit more on that base app plan, that required component that every application needs. There are different levels to choose from here. While we do recommend you start on the lowest plan possible and work your way up as needed, you may need to start on a higher plan just to begin with based on the capabilities your app requires. If there's a certain feature that you know your app wouldn't be able to work without, uh, this is something you want to be mindful of. So the free plan is where every new application starts. This is essentially a quick start area. You can build quite a bit here. Um, you know, you can design your pages, you can set up logic for a lot of your functionality, but it is a sandbox environment only, right? It's development only. You won't be able to go live on the free plan. You cannot connect to a custom domain. Um, you don't have access to backend workflows. You're limited to 200 database items. So this is a great place to get to know Bubble, but once you are ready to take it to the next step, you're going to want to move on to one of those paid plans. All right, so the first paid plan is the starter plan, and this is fantastic for most first version applications. A lot of limits are lifted, right? You no longer have a database limit. You can create as many records as you need. You have access to backend workflows now, and you can go live, of course. So this is also great if you are building by yourself and you don't necessarily need a bunch of collaboration tools that become available in the next uh, tiered plans. The next plan from here is growth. So if you do want to work with somebody in your editor uh, and get some help there, you can invite a collaborator to your editor. You can also create additional development branches so you have separate isolated environments to work in. Um, and a lot of limits are raised once you're on this plan as well. So for example, more file storage capability. You can go back further in time to restore your application if necessary, things like that. The next plan from here is team. So again, a lot of limits are raised even further and uh, you have more collaboration options. So you can invite more editors to your application. You can create even more branches. And this is the first plan that lets you enable sub applications. Sub apps are very popular for SaaS applications or any kind of multi-tenant structure where you need to create isolated environments for each of your customers. So everyone can be placed on their own database. You can white label things a lot more. Each of those sub apps can get their own domain and they're a part of your overall kind of 
app organization. And then the final paid plan is the enterprise plan. This is very much meant for large organizations. Um, typically, if there are certain compliance uh, requirements that they need to meet, you know, placing the application on a specific server region, have static IP addresses, you get a dedicated account manager with Bubble here. This is something that you're going to reach out to Bubble for to custom configure. You have a lot more customization control in terms of a lot of the underlying management of your versions, uh, rest restoration, uh, a centralized user management system. Uh, so again, this is typically for large organizations, but it's absolutely a plan that you can grow into if necessary. Choosing the right bubble plan really is a combination of getting on the right base plan and covering your workload needs on a monthly basis. Uh, because your base plan may not do it all for you. This is where an additional workload tier may apply or enabling overages may apply. So what you need to figure out is what your monthly usage is gonna look like. So how do you do this? You can go into your editor's metrics area uh, where Bubble is going to show you some charts of what your consumption looks like. So this is broken down into different time periods. You can really drill down into um, the various activities that contribute to that usage. This can help you isolate, you know, potentially heavier areas of your app, maybe opportunities to optimize. Uh, but this is something that is going to help you understand what your consumption looks like and what you're trying to land on is an average uh, monthly usage, right? You don't necessarily want to focus on a specific hour or even a day because that's too variable. Things can really change from one day to the next depending on the type of app that you're building. So once you've built up enough activity in your application, take a look at what that average is for the month. And that's going to point you in the right direction to you know, make the right decisions here for your overall subscription package. Um, keep in mind that you know, these numbers are going to change. You know, things are going to look very different when you're just getting started compared to when you're live and you may have much, much more activity from many more people, for example. Um, of course, if you're building something like an internal tool, things may be more predictable for you. Uh, but this is something that you want to review in aggregate. Okay, So the more data that you have, the better of an average uh, you'll be able to go off of. The next thing you want to decide is whether or not you want to turn on overages. Overages is a great safety net. If you have this enabled, you're never going to be taken offline, but it does mean that your monthly invoice could be more variable than not. Uh, because once you go into overages, you just pay for what you use. This is after you have exceeded your monthly allowance coming from your app plan and potentially a workload tier that you may have added to your subscription package. Once you've figured out which plan you want to put your app on and whether or not you want to enable overages, it's time to come into Bubble's subscription planner tool. This is a calculator that's going to help you find the best combination of all these components so that you don't pay for more than you need. Okay, I'm going to show you an example. We're going to go into our application here. We can see that in our live environment, um, over a month of time, we're using nearly 100,000 workload units. I'm going to round up to 100,000. So I'm going to take that 100,000, come into the subscription planner. I'm going to punch that number into this input here, 100,000. And I can already see, even before I hit calculate, that the starter plan comfortably covers my workload needs, right? The starter plan comes with 175,000 units. I'm also on the annual billing cycle. Um, which gives me a little bit of a discount. If I switch it over to monthly, it raises that price just a little bit more. We'll stick on the monthly here for now. Um, so I'm going to calculate and Bubble's basically going to confirm, yep, that's all you need. No additional workload tier, no overages are expected. The 175,000 is going to cover your expected 100,000. Okay, so let's say I want to uh, start on the growth plan, right? For whatever reason, I want some of the capabilities there that are not offered by the starter plan. Um, even if my units are nowhere near, you know, the, the growth plan allowance, you know, it more than enough covers what I need. So when I calculate here, it's just going to confirm that, yep, that is the minimum that you're going to pay is just for that plan because there's nothing extra that you need um, for your workload consumption. Now, let's go back to the starter plan. Let's say I raise my workload usage to 300,000 units. Now, this is a number that's beyond what the growth plan uh, includes. The first plan that would cover that amount is the team plan at $400 a month essentially here, right? So this comes with 500,000 workload units. But if I calculate, Bubble's going to give me a better combination of, um, you know, these pricing uh, components to keep my bill down. So if I want to stay on the starter plan, right, that gives me 175,000, I can add on a workload tier and actually the first level of workload tier here for an additional 200,000. So that gives me a total of 375 which covers my estimated 300. So I certainly do not need to upgrade to the team plan just to cover my workload consumption. That is the point of these workload tiers and potentially overages is so that you can find the most economical combination to cover your usage given the plan that you want your app to be on, right? For the specific bubble capabilities. 
right? So with the 375, I don't even need overages. You can see that this is zero here. Okay, so then let's go over to, let's say 500,000, right? Which is an amount that the team plan would cover, but do I need to jump up to the team plan? Nope, I certainly do not. I can stay on my starter plan, I can add a tier, and I can pay for overages to fill the rest of the gap there with my expected units. Now, this is of course expecting, uh, or it's assuming that I want to have overages turned on. If there's a, a potential for those overages to really run wild, if I really cannot anticipate what the usage is, and I don't want to have like a very big surprise bill, I can disable those. But again, remember, you risk your app being taken offline. So I may choose to um, either upgrade to a higher plan or maybe go to a higher workload tier to kind of more safely cover um, any unexpected workload units that are being consumed throughout the month. With this combination, my bill is at $79.75. That's even less than the growth plan to cover $500,000. But like I said, if I don't want to have overages turned on and I just want to pay for something that I know what I'm going to pay for every month um, and it's going to really comfortably cover my expected usage, I can I, uh, upgrade the plan type or go up to a higher tier. Um, I'm going to switch over to this tab so that you can see, you know, these are the different levels of tier and they very significantly increase your workload units uh, depending on the level that you're on. You can also pay annually versus monthly um, and you can see, you know, that there are prices there. I also want to note that when you're on a workload tier and the higher the tier you are, your uh, overage rate, if you do decide to have overages turned on, um, is discounted more and more and more. Okay, so we can see an example of this. With the workload tier, the overages is priced at 15 cents for every thousand, every additional thousand workload units. If I um, have a combination here where I don't need a workload tier, let's say I only need 180,000, right? So just a little bit over that starter plan, um, then it's just paying the starter plan and $1.50 a month for that last bit, uh, that last, uh, what is it, the 5,000 extra. But notice here that the rate is a little bit higher. It's at 30 cents for every additional thousand because um, I don't have an additional discount that's being applied um, with the workload tier. So the workload tier does give you a little bit of a benefit there. Uh, but again, it just depends, right? So um, this is a, a great calculator to help you find the most economical combination for your app. Don't forget, this is something that you are going to be reviewing periodically, right? Your application is going to scale, it's going to evolve, you're going to make your features more sophisticated, potentially more complex, you're gonna bring in more users to your app. Of course, every app is different, but don't forget about uh, monitoring your monthly consumption regularly because you may want to tweak your subscription package, right? It might be time to upgrade to another app plan or uh, upgrade to a different workload tier or add a new workload tier for the first time. Uh, this is something that should be a part of your normal maintenance routine and review uh, so that you're getting the best out of uh, these options that Bubble has for you. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.